Good morning, everybody. This is to Can Dragon, and welcome to a new segment I like to call Sci-Fi Science. Now, I can't explain to you what this segment is, but I'll do you one better. I would like to formally introduce your host for Sci-Fi Science, Noodle Cat. Good meowing, everybody. This is Noodle Cat, and as Toucan Dragon said, welcome to Sci-Fi Science, a show that debunks, deconstructs, and details some of the most obscure and obsolete concepts in gaming. Each month, we will cover particular topics dealing with misconceptions and or misunderstandings in the gaming world. For the rest of this month, we'll be focusing on a segment called Dinosaurs Dissected, a series that will analyze, discuss, as well as highlight the differences and sometimes inaccuracies made by the entertainment industries when creating these famous prehistoric animals. For this week, we will be diving into the depths of classic Hollywood horror with the famous and feared Velociraptor, or in the scientific community, Velociraptor mongoliensis, an icon of the Jurassic era. It made its first debut in 1993 as the main antagonist in the popular film Jurassic Park, in which its appearance was not entirely in line with science. In reality, that thing was like a foot and a half tall. <laughs> if yeah. I saw that thing there, I'll, I would kick it. And <laughs> be in the movie right there. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they could have. Although, one of the few things they did get right was that they did hunt in packs. And that they were very successful predators at that. So, they were as intelligent as, like, a dolphin or a wolf, like, in the, in the pack? Mm, uh, no. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. They, so saying they were stupid. still dinosaurs. They still would have had... Very Peace small brains, <laughs> not to be stereotypical. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so they were no. at least smart enough to know that hunting in a numbers does raise your chances of success. So you're saying that they couldn't open doors like in the movie? Uh, no, and they definitely would not have learned it that quickly <laughs> within the <laughs> seconds that it takes them to open the door handle. <laughs> was like, that was pretty impressive, you know. It was, although speaking of the door handle, what was really impressive was the fact that when, did you see when they blew on the glass and its head pops oh, up? Oh, yeah. It red fogs up the glass, which indicates that it's warm-blooded, not cold-blooded, because the in temperature inside its body was hotter than what was on the outside. So was so, that like, was that like a mistake on the movie's part, or was that intentional? No, that was partly intentional by the movie's director, Steven Spielberg, because he did actually have a dinosaur expert with him at the time, although it can go either way because, like the premise of the film, Jurassic Park is supposed to be on the leading edge of technology in understanding of these animals. However, in real life, at the time, 1993... We did not know a whole lot about dinosaurs, or at least how their bodies function. Because again, we don't have anything that's alive to study. <laughs> <laughs> so it was debated at the time whether they were cold or warm-blooded. However, now we know that, Velo that Velociraptors and other dinosaurs are, dis are, I guess you could say, descendants, <laughs> now that they're in the ground, <laughs> uh, of modern birds and modern birds as we know are warm-blooded not cold-blooded like reptiles furthermore we know that they are somewhere in the middle between warm and cold-blooded so they didn't have to continually depend on the sun to raise their body temperature however they weren't like us humans and could control it themselves so you're, you're saying they're kind of in between the reptile and the bird because the birds are warm-blooded and the reptiles cold-blooded so they'd be like in there in the middle they would be, although, in my personal opinion, I would think it'd probably be more towards the warm-blooded, because mm. to be a predator, you have to move f at least faster than your prey, or be able to survive longer than your prey in order to catch it. <laughs> so, in reality, it makes somewhat amount of sense that they would have been, although I'm not one to debate with scientists. <laughs> so would that be the same throughout most of the dinosaurs, like a Tyrannosaurus and a Spino? Most likely, it would... Uh, maintain that same efficiency. However, it largely would depend on the species and also the era in which it lived for the Jurassic area in which there were a majority of land mammals and reptiles and ornithids, which are bird-like dinosaurs. It would have been 
largely warm-blooded. However, in certain other periods, it could have been different because, again, Earth's climate rapidly changed in the mm -hmm. past 14 million years, so who knows? And again, with no live specimens to study, can't know for sure. We can just make our best guess. <laughs> <laughs> we, ha we always have chickens, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually what velociraptors would have been close to the size of. They would have been approximately 1.8 meters long which is about six feet and they would have been half a meter tall which is about one and a half feet and would have weighed about 15 kilograms which is 30 pounds so they would have been Shit. about the size of a small turkey although their head probably wouldn't reach your waist if they were laid out like this and they were running so you wouldn't have much to worry about there although honestly i'd be more concerned about that giant claw on their foot <laughs> <laughs> Compared to the Jurassic Park Velociraptor, that Velociraptor is so much bigger. So, do you think they knew the raptor was that that small and they just took creative liberty? Or did they know that what they were doing? Or what's going on there? Why was it so big compared to the actual raptor, which was so small? Well, it was a little bit of both. Because, again, you have to think about the premise of the movie and how media can take creative liberties with weaving that into the storyline. But also, I think it's a horror factor. You know, if you see something that's the size of, say, a Labrador retriever that looks like a velociraptor, you're probably not going to be as scared as if it was, say, six feet tall or six and a half feet tall and was looking you in the eye and had a mouth that could literally chop your arm off <laughs> <laughs> to be honest i'd be more terrified of a pack of those tiny little raptors than one velociraptor <laughs> yeah definitely and that's that's the other thing too is we don't know how successful they were because one of the original specimens of velociraptor fossils that were found among the others is a very famous one called the fight which is velociraptor and what I believe is a Sinoceratops locked in battle. And oh, shit. Velociraptor has its claw, what looks like would probably be in the Sinoceratops's neck. However, the Sinoceratops beak was preserved and it appears to be breaking its arm. Also, that's another thing in the movie is that we have no idea if those arms, which would have been winged, by the way, we have no idea if they were used to grass prey like they do in the movies because you know especially in jurassic world whenever they lash out at someone they go arms first and try to grab them yeah try to reach through, reach through stuff so we have no idea if they would have even been used for that or if they were like the t-rex and just more or less just the real organs <laughs> little tiny arms <laughs> <laughs> yeah those t-rex t-shirts would be featuring velociraptors <laughs> <laughs> So you, you mentioned that the arms would probably, probably be feathered, so would the whole body just be feathered like a chicken or be like partly feathered? Because in the movie, it, they're not feathered at all. It's just like leathery skin or scales. It looks like leathery skin, to be honest, from the movie, but it's probably trying to go with scales, but it wouldn't be like that, right? No. The lower feet might have been, you know, in accordance with modern-day birds and what their feet look like, where it's partly scaled but also sort of leathery skin. However, most of their body would have been feathered because scientists have found quill knobs on fossils which means that quill knobs are the places where the flight related feathers of birds are attached to the bone and they discovered those on velociraptor fossils in 2008 so we know for a fact that they at least had some although we don't know how many because again when you're searching for fossils <laughs> it gets kind of hard <laughs> to understand entirely although who knows so do you think that since he had these feathers and these cold knobs, could they fly or at least glide? No, they probably would not have been able to fly. I know it sounds like a bee joke, but the, <laughs> but the size of their forearms, not to mention the amount of feathers and the type of feathers, probably would not have been able to give them enough proper lift in order to be able to fly. If they were falling, they it could have... It could have potential benefit to slow their descent, maybe, but for the most part, scientists think that they weren't used for flying and more or less for 
generating either thrust or maneuverability while they were running up steep surfaces. <laughs> or just get all fancy and just up in those little fancy feathers. <laughs> yeah, like putting them over their head and doing like a little cha-cha dance or something. Oh, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I would do that. Go to the club, put on some Velociraptor feathers and start like strutting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you'd probably get eaten, but <laughs> oh, that's that's probably true. <laughs> At least they're not praying mantises, though. <laughs> oh God! Oh no! In PTSD. <laughs> so the closest thing that we have in the entertainment industry that resembles the actual raptor is in the video game Ark Survival Evolved, right? It's it's feathered, but not like completely feathered. Well, maybe, but. Again, who knows? Although, if you played Ark Survival Evolved and you've listened to this podcast, you'd probably think that the Microraptor looks more similar. Um, except true. for the ability to paralyze you with neurotoxins or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the Arcs in, or the Raptors in Ark Survival Evolved do appear to be feathered somewhat. Although, again, the size and shape of certain body parts such as the uh, head and arms would have probably been more creative liberty to increase the scare factor yeah and i'm pretty sure you couldn't really ride a real raptor either not like an arc <laughs> <laughs> no and they probably wouldn't have been that easy to tame either <laughs> <laughs> so would the macro raptor be closely resembling the actual raptor then uh, in size and somewhat of appearance, yes, although it wouldn't have had a tail that looks like a turkey mixed with a robin, <laughs> <laughs> and they definitely would probably not have had that crest on the top of their head that's right above the eyes of the Microraptor in the game. Mm -hmm. And the arms wouldn't have been complete wings like they are with the Microraptor, they would have been more you know, T-Rex-like arms, uh, probably with more feathers, though. But again, it's hard to tell, mostly because also uh, very biological materials, and when I say that, I mean materials that are don't contain a lot of minerals, don't preserve very well. So it gets very hard to tell when you're looking at fossils what something is. It could even be something that, like a scratch. It could be another piece of a rock. It could be bone. Now, before we end the video, there is something that I want to go over that I'd actually like to hear your comments about. And that is something that I noticed, at least while watching the movies and looking at all these games. Something that I've wondered about, although I don't know if it's true, is that the eyes of the Velociraptor are always on the sides of the head. And that is usually not what a predator looks like. Because true. in nature, a predator is going to have the eyes on the front of its face, on the front of its head, both looking straight forward because you're focusing on a prey item. Whereas a herbivore or a prey animal, you're going to have them on the sides because you're trying to keep your awareness so that you don't get eaten. <laughs> I noticed that their eyes are always on the sides of their head. So I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think that that was correct for them to do? Or do you think that's how they actually were? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. I am Noodle Cat. This is Toucan Dragon, and welcome to Sci Fi Science. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and check out our other content at Rat and Toucan Entertainment <laughs> <laughs> and let us know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like you said, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like this, then please click on that like button. And you might also subscribe to this channel. It's completely free and won't cost you anything. And we'll support the content like this. And we'll keep bringing out content like this if you guys keep, you know, commenting and liking this video. So, you know, might as well do it. And don't forget to ring that little bell so you can be notified when we do. Click the bell. Do it. <laughs> this has been Sci-Fi Science. I'm your host, Noodle Cat. And Toucan Dragon. And have a fantastic day. So many cat puns. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys.